This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are Navigating the Journey. Navigating the journey is dedicated to exploring the options and choices of life and to assist people to talk about their wishes. It's time to transform our culture so we shift from not talking about these things that are important to us to talk about the things that are important. It's time to share the way we want to live our lives. And it is time to communicate about the kind of things we want for ourselves and our neighbors. And we believe that this is the place and the time to do that. So together we can explore the various paths in life. Together we can make these difficult conversations easier. And together we can talk about our own wishes and those of our loved ones. Then we express and respect them. So if you're ready, we ask you, navigate the journey. Join us. Today, I have with me my new best friend, and you know I always have my best friend, and he is Representative Sam Kong from IAEA, and he is here to talk about that subject that we pretend that doesn't exist, and that is the homeless. He is a champion of the homeless, unlike anybody else I've met. So that is a subject we pretend, oh, that's over there. We don't have to look at that. And they keep moving these people from place to place. And they say, oh, those are mentally ill or those are drug addicted. They never talk about the people that make $10 an hour and the rent is $1,800 a month. They don't talk about those people. They don't talk about the people who have to buy bus passes for children to get to school at $30 a child. They don't talk about all of those things that go into making Hawaii the number one in homelessness, number one of 50 states in homelessness. So I asked Representative Kong to come talk to us about his plans and how he can help and how we can help him help. Oh. Thank you, Marsha. Thank, Thank you, you for having me on the show. I really appreciate Maybe. this. So well, tell, tell us about you first. Okay. Um, well, you, earlier you asked me what committees I on, I'm on. Right. But more importantly, maybe we'll skip over that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, how I got into this. Yes. For the past 25 years, I've actually been working with the homeless, mostly on a one-to-one -one basis. In fact, I owned a florist. And of all things, we had in IAEA, and we had a problem within our own community. So to help out in our little old section, I actually housed the homeless in my floor shop. And I actually housed the homeless in back of my floor shop, and so forth and so on. So for the past 25 years, I've been working with them, just trying to help within my own community, my own little neighborhood. So for all these years, and trying to come up with solutions for them. And so in my own little ways, you know, try to help my own little section, that's where it started from. And then lo and behold, not even knowing, not even actually campaigning, I got elected. So I took it on as like a personal crusade to help with the homeless. And I put together this team and we came up with different projects. So this is? What we came up you, with. Can is, you hold it? Yeah. Oh yes. Hold it up. Can you read that? It. But can, it's, can, we, can we get a shot of this? No. But it's a housing. Hold it, yeah. It's a housing first project. Mm -hmm. And basically what it states is, we're doing, trying to build temporary stable modular homes to be used as rental units. And we had a timeline, approximately 15 to 20 years. And that was so, by the time they say TOD and so forth comes online, we would be able to move our residents from our units to affordable 
housing units. But then in doing so, we'll be serving families, mm -hmm. veterans, the COFA, the Chronics, all these different projects, working with all these different ministries, Hina Malka, prison ministries, veterans, medical community, the whole gamut. And we wanted to do 45 to 50 projects. Wow. A lot of projects using federal, state, city properties. So depending what property it is and where it's located, it would make each property unique, serving different sections of the community, right? right. So imagine this, if we were to house 75 to 150 individuals per site at doing 45 to 50 projects, we would actually house what? 3,300 to 7,000 homeless individuals. That wow. could probably do, and this is for the island of Oahu only, only. basically. Yeah. So that's what happens. So where have you been all of my life? Right. <laughs> and just, How is it that we don't know about this? We've tried, actually, when I became a freshman just a few years ago right. to bring this project up, no one would listen. No one. I couldn't get this thing off the ground. So, I why just... Do you, why, do you, why do you mean no one would listen? They didn't you like my idea. They just oh. wouldn't... They didn't think housing. They were thinking only service, service, service to service these individuals to get them moved on, not to house them. And then, but the city, of course, went into the Housing First programs and so forth. And now I put together my team and we started going after these properties. Good. And we started to look for them. And just so happens, I caught the ear of DOT, Department of Transportation, Transportation. Yes. right? And they, of all things, came up with the first property. They offered me six acres. Wow in Pro City. Mm -hmm. So this is my first pilot project, and we're working on it now. It's under the bridge? It's under the freeway, yes. Under the freeway? Off of Hugh Street in Pro City. Wow. They, it's a, they're offering it for 30 year lease, and I got the city. A dollar? It basically, free, yes, and actually free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they authorize it for a 100 bed project. So we went through the process and, you know, for the sewage capacity. Right. So they authorized it for a 100 bed project. And we are going through the development and the site surveys and everything and the design. So, so there will be individual modules. Yes. Yes. So, so it's not just a, not, not a whole thing where you dump people in, but Correct. it'll be their own. Correct. Oh, how Rental wonderful. Units. Yes, similar and, to what the city's been doing out in Waianae, like the Holona project. Yes. And they actually have other projects on board. But this is our way, and these units will be Section 8 qualified, so forth, so we can actually house people, people. homeless. Yes. yes. And they're like one to two bedroom units, so forth, for the Section 8. Mm -hmm. so, so the people that that I keep talking about those that are working but can't pay $1,800 a month rent. Correct. Can they qualify for yes, this? Yes, this is yes. the one. This is the one. This is it. And because, like I say, each project is unique, this one will not address the chronics. Right. So the ones that you see on the roads, this is not exactly right. for them. But we have... You have one for them, too? Other projects coming up on oh, for them. Great. Correct, right. But so this on the third page is a map of where it would be. Yeah, but I think but that's this is too it. light to show. Right, to show on the... But this yeah, is... Can, there's no, a map here, but I think it's awfully light. I don't know. Can you see this? I'm not sure, but this but this is, just gives you an idea of where we're headed. This is see, just the Take first. a look at this and see. Is that... Right. It's awfully light, but oh, maybe my God, show. right here in this corner, right here. So where, that's it. Tell us where what we're looking at. So this is Lehu Avenue going towards. This is the bike path mm -hmm. heading towards the peninsula, Cam Highway. This is the Urban Garden Center up here, Lehu Elementary. So we're trying to actually 
we have a sliding scale the way we design it. So we're going to take it to the community. And this still has to be uh, approved by the Federal Highway Administration. Right. So that's why we're coming with all these plans to present to them for their approval. And that's so, where we're so at now. So with the gardens, they can grow things? Well, we, if you're living here, you can... Well, you actually, can, we can actually work with, with them. them. So, we, and so if you're a, a florist, you know how to do that. So, and <laughs> they have a security problem there now with the homeless going in and stealing their crops, stealing their tools. Oh dear. So hopefully we can work with work them, them and work to, something yes. out there. But this is our first pilot project. But we have other projects online. I'm not sure if you've seen this. This was in the paper 2012 on the Cedar Church property that they bought in Wyanai. In, in Wyanai, yes. Right. Can we see this? So they have four acres, but it's ag property. Ag is very interesting. It has very, well, a lot of limitations, but a lot of potential. So we are working right now as we speak on this. So this is six acres, this is four acres. So I already have 10 acres that I'm working with while the rest of the state, you know, they have nothing, nothing. so far, right? <laughs> so I already have 10 acres under my belt. So this is the second project we're working on to help with the homeless. And this is just to show you the DPP map and everything. Then on another note, just because of time, this is a, Another project that's happening in Wainai, this is a thousand acre, but this is very specific for the chronics. This is the ones that are is mentally that Patty's ill. Place? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to help, and this is her priority list that we're right. actually trying to help out with that. And this is the one that I, this is a veterans project that we want to do. This is on federal property. So we actually Let's went see. out and designed it for them. But Where is this? This is in, of all things, in IAEA. Oh, in IAEA? Yes, yeah. it's, the property belongs to the Navy. So this is going to be very interesting. I'm not even sure if I can get this one off the ground, or well, even if IAEA people will. But you remember, uh, no, that was Pearl, Pearl City, yeah. where all the... Quonset huts and all those buildings oh, were right. as you go up Lehua from the pen right. peninsula. Yes, yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes, yes and yes, you go all the way up. Touch. Yes. Right. Yeah, all of that was Navy land. Right. Yeah. So this is Navy property also. So I actually approached the VA and I've actually spoke to the U.S. vets because what happens is all these programs that we have now, the question is at the end of the day, where are they going to send their people? They have nowhere to send their people. It's interesting, you know, they go through the programs and yet they end up nowhere to go after right. they f complete the programs. Yes. So this one is specifically for the veterans. So this is a project kind of near and dear to my heart being a veteran myself. <laughs> so I'm not sure if I can get, you know, I'm not sure how the IAF people will feel or anything or how the Nate, you know, if we can do it, but this is just my dream list. I, like I say, I have 50 projects I want to do. <laughs> so, but I went ahead and I had a friend draw, an architect, just draw me a picture, you know, just to see what it could look like and see where we can go from there. So this is just That's part of the projects that we're all looking, and we've actually identified a lot of properties okay we need to take a break we will okay. come back in one minute oh, and then we'll so look quick. at we'll look yes we'll look at some of your other projects okay and yes and Great. our difficulties yeah, okay this is think tech hawaii raising public awareness Welcome to Hawaii. This is Prince Dykes, your host of the Prince of Investing, coming to you guys each and every Tuesday at 11 a.m. right here on Think Tech Hawaii. Don't forget to come by and check out some of the great information on stocks, investing, your money, all the other great stuff, and I'll be your host. See you Tuesday. We'll talk about something different now. Okay. The difficulties. Aloha, and we're back.
and we are talking with my new best friend, <laughs> Representative Sam Kong. Now, for those of you that are political junkies like me, and you watch every election, this is the gentleman that went to bed thinking he had lost, only to wake up and find the paper said he won. And thank goodness he won because he has got these marvelous programs for the homeless, for that people that we pretend like they're over there someplace. And here is somebody that's de devoted his life, 25 years, to this. So I am honored to have you, and I am so thrilled with these projects. So tell us, what else are you doing? Real quickly, can <laughs> I say something about that? Yes. Did you know that the first time I actually won, I did not campaign. I did not collect any monies. <laughs> I didn't do any, no flyers or nothing. I was sick in the hospital, laid up, oh. and just so happens I won. I don't know why. And this past time, re-election, I feel ill again. So it just so happens, no campaign, no nothing. I just, am I, right. I left it up to God. Yes. Almost and it worked. Yeah, yeah, it, it worked. worked. I almost lost, but thank God. It's, yes. it's really strange. So it is. It is. hopefully this, this all is all. There's a reason out. for that, there, and this is the reason. Hopefully, yes. yes. I don't know why, but anyway, I digress. Sorry. But um, interestingly enough, working on these projects, we had to find out what are the goals of the state, of the city, and so forth. And Do why? they have goals? Good question. Oh, you know what? I wrote them down. Okay. I actually asked. The goals of the state. Uh, I don't know what this means, but anyway, I'll just read them out. Functional zero. To reach functional zero. Functional zero. Okay, okay. go ahead. Affordable housing. Yes. Outreach. Okay. Housing first, transition to permanent. Okay. And putting out the fires. Where? Those are the state's goals. Now. Have they met any of those? Well, they are doing the they, outreach. Yes, most definitely. They are doing the outreach. By and just moving people from street to street, is well, that outreach? Yes, they are outreaching to, and each time they move them, they outreach to those un people. And well, out of a hundred or two hundred, they housed eighty, eighteen. The right to shelter, right? I think eighteen. Right, correct. And now we can put eighteen people in here, so that's that's nothing. But that is. 18. Okay. I don't know, Let's but th that is the goal. Let's so, keep going. And I actually <laughs> wrote, wrote, it them, down. wrote them down, and I was kind of interesting. But, I mean, regardless, this is the facts, and this is what they stated. So I am pushing so much for housing. Yes. And not, in a sense, housing first. What, when they say housing first, it's like they have to pre-qualify in order to be put into housing. I'm kind of more in the terms was, we house them first, and as the services are needed, they will be provided, not necessarily pre-qualifying each individual for well, the housing. But again, that, that begs the question. They, they're presuming that these people have an issue other than, I just don't make enough money to pay the rent. Correct. That right. just forgets those people. Correct. Yes. The hidden homeless. The, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. I walked, of course, being an old time Democrat, I walked the district, uh, you know, every year when we campaign for somebody. And Pico, you know where Pico is? Yeah. Yeah. It was one house with 11 surnames on the mailbox. Can you imagine okay. 11 different surnames on the mailbox? So who knows how many people were in that house? Right, correct. You know, that's what we're dealing with. Oh, that's a generations, monster homes, right? Generations after generations, four generations in we, in in this well that house had eleven, but and so many houses had three and four generations. Correct. And we need to help them. We well, 
Yeah. My own son can't even move out of the house. So <laughs> I don't know what to say about that, you know. <laughs> I know. I want to kick him out, but it's where not happening. Where, right? where, where are you going? Go? Yeah, where afford. you going? Yeah. We can't afford it. But we are trying so hard to not necessarily it costs so much to service them. It does. In a sense. And it in a sense to house them would actually be cheaper in a sense. Even on the medical side, if you look at what's happened to Queen's Hospital. Oh, unbelievable, isn't it? The emergency room reports that mm -hmm. you see in the newspapers, how they go in and out. Queen's, of course, has accept federal funds, and when you accept federal funds, you have to take everybody. Correct. So they don't even get to choose, you know, right. and they're overrun with people. And, of course, if you're living on the street, and one person has an ailment, right. hepatitis. We lead the nation in hepatitis. And there's a reason for that. It's called aloha. Oh, we share. Yeah. So if one person has hep A or B, right. and they share a razor or a comb and brush, any of those simple things of sharing, you pass it on. Right, yeah. So that's the first thing we need to deal with is to get these people a place to be so they don't have to share, that they don't have to do those things. Unfortunately, right. Yeah. And the situation we put them in, especially in the shelters. Right. Just so happens. I went to visit a friend yesterday at IHS. It's an oh. interesting thing. But they're ill there now. They are. They, um, I guess because of the weather, I don't know, maybe, in fact, even in the offices now, a lot of people are just ill, sick, um, with colds. But they cannot shake their colds. I'm finding out they're just ill. Well, that's because they sh they're sharing. They keep moving the cold on. Right. And, and it may be that that building is sick. The people they come in, you're right. right, and the Maybe living the conditions. Building. Yeah, the air conditioning, mold, all kinds of. Or being just out on the street all yeah. the time. They, they don't have a place to heal. heal. No. That's why I really want these projects to move because at least give them a stable environment. Giving them a stable environment will actually help them, well, I think, just succeed in so many ways. Getting them physically better, I think even mentally better. better. Of course. Yes. You know, if, if you, now we are mammals, but people don't like to admit it, but we are. And we were designed to walk on the grass and on the soil and what have you. So even walking on concrete can be hard on your feet, your back, your knees. Can you imagine sleeping on concrete? What ailment you would get? If you weren't sick before you got out there, you're sick now. Correct. Yeah. So we, you're right. We have to have a place for them to heal. Oh, yes. Yeah. So important, I think. But we shall fight but each step. Okay, and, what I want oh. you to do, I want yes. you to look right in the camera. Oh, okay. Hi. And, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I want you to look in the camera and you tell people how they can call you, how they can support you on this issue. I want you to tell them your office number, how they can reach you, email, whatever. But we want, want people to support you. So tell them what they can do to support you. The best thing to do, call my cell, 699-0222. Say it again. 699-0222. Anytime, 24 7. Later, the better. At night, I mean. I don't care if it's 10, 11, midnight, 2 o'clock in the morning, give me a call. Do not be afraid to use that number. Last night, 1 30 in the morning, I got a call. It's okay. I don't mind. It's but we that want important. people to support your project. We need people to support you. So yes. whatever you want them to do, again, tell us what, what can we do to support you? Actually, just your voice is so important. Letting other people know you're 
other representatives, anybody who is, has a heart. Oh, warning. This is not an easy subject. Of course it isn't. <laughs> if working with the homeless, you will become disappointed. You might get ripped off. You might get a lot of bad things may happen to you when you work with the homeless. I can tell you now. But you ha if you have a heart for it, it's worth it. Well, well it, but, even if I can't go out in the it, street, but well, how can well, I... Oh, support you in the legislature. Oh. Yes. What, what can I do? You, there's this little book of all your listing of representatives. Right. Give call. them a call and let them know, hey, I heard Sam on Marsha's program, you know, and then he's working on this homeless project. You should give him a call. Come visit his office. My office is lined with pictures of properties and all of this paperwork. Of, I got all these... Um, all these studies yes. and studies of homelessness and everything. So we need to have a cadre of people to support you to get this through the legislature. Is that what we're talking about? Get them to know get what them we're, to know what what's you're happening. Doing. Just let them know and let the word out. And money. I don't know about monies or anything. You know, we won't well, know, well, go well, there. Yeah, but, but but at least the people, people know. We yeah, need people to support right. this project. Exactly. To, yes. Exactly. Yeah, we need people and to, what, because that's all we have. That's all I have is my voice. Right. That's all we have. Have your voice, and add, And add your voice to this. Exactly. Every day we need, and it's okay to move, move the, um, to have the link will be on YouTube at the end of the day. Oh, move gosh. this link around. Tell your friends. Join him. Join Representative Kong and Thank you. and we just need people. We need to get behind this. We cannot. This is the richest nation ever in the history of the world, and we have people living on the streets, children going to bed hungry. This has got to stop. And we, you, our audience has a voice, and we need to get started. So it's been a real pleasure spending this time with you. You will come back. This is the shortest half an hour, <laughs> I tell you what, Marsha. We have so much to so, say on this project. Please, you will come back and keep us updated oh, we'll on do, how yes. we're moving along, okay? Oh, yes, thank you very Thank much. you. Aloha, and we will see you next time.